That's Soons with Armed for Peace right here on Free Association. Before that, Zebra Head with Brixton. And before that, Akron Family with Another Sky. I'm Mark Lane, and I'm not just any other guy. I'm the Fort Smith Fireball, your champion of chicken, and the salt of segways. So with that being said, let's go ahead and transition into my interview now with Congressman Steve Womack from the 3rd Congressional District in Arkansas. Congressman Womack, thanks for being on Free Association. Let me ask you this. What was it like, what was your feeling when you found out that you won the election? Well, having played a lot of sports in my life, it was like any other victory. You know, you celebrate your victories. Uh, We had a plan that we thought was uh, capable of producing a victory, and we achieved what our objective was. So there was a certain sense of accomplishment, but Along with that sense of accomplishment came the reality of the fact that the country is in deep financial trouble and that we have a lot of work ahead. So it was, um, it was a, in some respects, a, a bit of euphoria, albeit short-lived, because soon after the confetti fell and the balloons had uh, gone up, the reality set in that uh, we're about to go to Washington and have to tackle some very difficult challenges. But that's why we ran. We ran because we feel like our country needs leadership right now and needs fiscal accountability, and we believe we had that uh, that capability. So it's a good feeling. There's really no other feeling like it uh, to win whatever you're doing, whether it's tiddlywinks or badminton or, uh, you know, playing against your buddies on the on the school uh, sandlot uh, or winning a political race the the uh, joy of victory is a great uh, is a great feeling well what's uh, the feeling like being a junior congressman what's oh it's uh, about like probably being a senior congressman except for the experience factor uh, you're one of 435 members uh, your voting card has the same power and privilege that uh, the voting card of the most senior member of Congress has you know our ability to uh, take on large amounts of information and try to wrap your head around the problems facing our country even though we talked a lot about them on the surface during the campaign but to get truly your feet on the ground and and get your head around these issues it takes a while but at the end of the day you're one of 435 people you all have the same uh, same authority and and uh, your vote means the same and so it's kind of an awesome feeling you know to be surrounded by guys that have been here 30 years plus and uh, to know that you've got the same uh, privilege and uh, the same voting power uh, that they have so uh, but being a junior member of congress is a very Uh, time-consuming, steep learning curve uh, sort of activity. You just have a lot of work to do. You're trying to get staff put together. Uh, You're starting from scratch and uh, but but it's fun. I mean it's just a it's it's a lot of fun. It's fascinating work. I'm surrounded by history and uh, I'm one of just a few thousand people that have ever had the privilege of doing this kind of job. So I'm, I'm very excited about it. Well, certainly there's a lot of fun in being the vice chair of the Energy and Water Subcommittee. Well, now, fun's a relative term. It's a challenge. Of the three subcommittees, I am probably least experienced in the energy and water arena, which is good uh, because uh, it challenges me to become a lot more proficient in the subject matter of energy and water-related issues. Everything about my job is fun, you know, dealing with my staff, coming up with legislative priorities, dealing with constituent concerns and issues back home. And uh, even though I don't particularly care for the travel, it's kind of exciting to go back and forth between D.C. and the district and to be able to see vividly the difference between the two areas. so, uh, but fun's kind of relative. Uh, it, it, look, your definition of fun and my definition of fun uh, probably are going to be somewhat different. And there are people that tell me they wouldn't have my job uh, for all the money in the world. Uh, but I heard that as a mayor, too, that people didn't want to be the mayor. But look, somebody's got to do this work. And it's very important work for the future of our republic. And so I subscribe to kind of the feeling, and, I, and, and look, I share this a lot with kids when I'm in schools. 
that I want them to, to train themselves when confronted with leadership challenges to ask this question. If not me, who? This work is going to be done by somebody, and it's very important work. So if you have leadership aptitude, then ask yourself the question, if not me, who? And in every circumstance where I've been confronted in my career as a broadcaster, as a financial consultant, as a military officer, and, and as a mayor and, and in this political environment, I ask that question a lot. And so in some cases, I'm prepared to defer to what I believe is quality leadership that I don't have to uh, espouse. But in cases like running for mayor and now being in Congress and having run for Congress, I had to answer that question that I was not completely satisfied with the field, and so I made myself available. Certainly. Now, what exactly are the chances of repealing health care reform? I noticed that you did vote to repeal health care reform, but uh, there are a lot of factors. You got the Senate, you got the presidency, and so forth. So, realistically, what are the chances that health care reform gets repealed? Well, you know, I don't really make a practice of handicapping the potential outcomes of anything. I'm, I'm really here to do what I think is best. Uh, and I'm joined by 434 other colleagues doing the same thing, so there's a lot of moving parts to this equation. But we have voted to, we have made the decision in our pledge to America last fall to vote to repeal Obamacare. And uh, even though it's one leg of the stool, so to speak, the fact that we, the House and the majority of the House has voted, by the way, we voted to repeal Obamacare with more of a majority than was included in the decision to, uh, to pass Obamacare in the beginning. But I am, uh, we have met the pledge. We have said we would do it, and we do it. We don't control what the Senate does. We don't control what the White House might do. Uh, so I'm, but I'm not going to handicap the potential outcome. I'm just going to simply say we did what we said we would do, and we've uh, stood firm on that uh, on that promise. Well, it appears our handlers are telling us to wrap it up. So I'll end with one final question: What's the one issue that you'd like to see resolved during your term? Well, if I could be king for a day, I'd wipe away the debt. I would create the, the program or the, the magic bullet that basically takes the debt off of your generation and your kids' generation and probably their kids' generation, that the enormous debt that faces our country, now in excess of $14 trillion, and on the current glide path of spending forecast to go well beyond $20 trillion, and then underneath that, uh, as was articulated last night in a presentation, kind of the aquifer, if you will, underneath all that that you can't see is the what we call the fiscal gap, and that's the total liabilities facing this country from a from a, an entitlement perspective, which is uh, in excess of a hundred trillion dollars. And so, uh, the the one issue that I feel called to work toward is to work us toward a balanced budget so that we're not contributing any more to the debt, and then eventually through productivity uh, and other uh, proactive measures that we begin to whittle away at what we owe our creditors. And then once we have established or once we're on the path to establishing a better, more sound fiscal policy, then I believe that we will have at the same time simultaneously remove the uncertainty that plagues our economy right now and empowers the entrepreneurs and releases the kind of that pent-up demand to uh, produce jobs in our country, put America back to work. So that's the one thing that I think uh, most of my colleagues would agree is job one for us, and that is our fiscal accountability and the creation of jobs. A lot of other things under the surface that are kind of on the back burner right there, but that would, uh, right now, but that would be what I believe is job one. Yeah, all we're seeing now is the tip of the iceberg, but there's a lot more 
submerged. Congressman Womack, thank you for joining me on Free Association. My pleasure. Thank you. Well, after an interview like that, you can only follow it up with some iron and wine, which we'll have right after the break, but not before Radio Steve gives us the weather. We'll be right back. <laughs> 